So a couple a couple points um, to make your the information that we talk about in class about your uh, your project, your paper, whatever you want to call it, some that you're going to learn more about, some you're interested in. Um, I posted that on Moodle, but I'm also going to find, I just have to go back and find which class it was. Even though it's on my YouTube channel, I'll go ahead and try to post that again, just in case if you wanted to rewatch the conversation and kind of have some questions. I also extended the deadline to it. Uh, basically to the last day of finals to give you some more time. Um, okay. Um, do you have any general questions before we get rolling with some practice <coughs> stuff? Okay. Um, I'm going to try to simplify what I think is a overstimulation of perceived information. It's it's really not to be every joint we go to outside of kind of learning, maybe a few muscles. Some of them you already know, but some of them might be new. <coughs> How those muscles influence motion is the same by pulling. So, so don't, don't, or try not to think, oh gosh, we have to start all over when we go to a new joint. It's the same concepts, but we just may have to learn some new players. Okay. So, simplifying things we're not even going to talk about knee flexors knee extensors we'll use terms that i think even our relatives and friends would understand quads and hamstrings okay but we understand that although quad emphasizes or suggests the four knee extensors right hamstrings don't suggest all the knee flexors right there's others besides those hamstrings in addition quads and hams don't infer or suggest why we even need them to do a job versus flexion pullers, extension pullers. So the name of the group helps us to see who we need for certain exercises. So simplifying things. In this exercise, would she need quads or hamstrings? Quads, and I, and I would bet that most students would be able to see that. All I'm trying to do is say, okay, if you were in a clinic or if you were having a conversation and someone couldn't see why it was quads, how would you explain? How would you prove that we're working quads in this exercise? How would you, how would you able, outside of just saying, trust me, how do we know and 310 says, well, what is, in this case, gravity trying to do to my knee? Gravity would be trying to flex my knee in 99% of this exercise. Gravity is not trying to flex my knee here, but you know what it's not trying to do? Extend me. It's not trying to do anything here. So if I extend it, I got to make it extend it with my extension pullers, right? So in other words, gravity is trying to flex me. I need muscles influencing my motion in an extension direction. And the quads happen to be extension pulling muscles at the knee. And that's how I know that I need the quads because I need extensors because gravity's trying to flex me. True? Okay. Would it be quads from left to right and then hamstrings from right to left? No. And again, I would think that a majority of kidney students would be able to see that. All I'm trying to do is put some context into verbiage. We wouldn't need hamstrings to go back down. We could just relax and let gravity take me back down. If, if I use my hamstrings, I'd yank my leg back, right? So we need quads from here to there and quads from there to here. Well, how can something that pull do two different motions? The muscle can't pull me up and then push me down, and I don't need it to push me down. I already got gravity trying to pull me down. So that's trying to remind you about the context of contraction, that the same muscles can influence two different motions through two different types of contraction. Quads or extensors, extension pulling muscles at the knee, are going to actually do extension through concentric contraction, shortening while they're trying to shorten, doing what they're trying to do.
causing motion in the direction of their pull all means the same thing. But the same muscles that are pulling in a direction of knee extension can let my knee flex through eccentric contraction, allowing motion in the opposite direction of its pull, letting gravity be greater. Same muscles, different motion because of different contractions. And that principle applies at the ankle and the subtalar and the knee and the hip and the trunk and the neck and the wrist and the elbow. It, that concept applies everywhere. So all we're doing is taking a concept that I think we're somewhat familiar with and just putting more specific verbiage of what we call the quads. The quads are knee extensors because they pull that way. And then in our class, we're like, okay, I've heard quads my whole life, but who are the quads? And you say, well, my three vast eye muscles, one more on the outside, the middle and the inside, lateralis, intermediates, and media. And then we have this weird one that, 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 that is named differently, the rectus, that crosses my hip in addition to my knee. And that's where we went into the stretchy components of a muscle, longer is stronger because of the stretchy stuff. And so for a muscle like the rectus, because our hips are flexed, that muscle's on slack at the hip. So which of the quads do you think we would emphasize more, work a little more in a seated position of the four quads? Wouldn't be we work in our vast eye muscles a little more because they're not affected at the knee. But the rectus is on slack at the hip, so therefore it's going to pull less at the knee. And that's cool for you uh, future professionals, personal trainers, therapists, because you may want to emphasize a certain muscle, so you may want to change that person's position. Maybe a standing exercise that would work your knee extensor so that you can lengthen that rectus and stretch it at the hip so it pulls more at the knee, right? Or you may want to not do it to emphasize if you're trying to work one of the, the vast eye muscles that are, that are weak or it, or, or it has an injury to it, knowing, and again, I'm not making you know this for every muscle, but some of the major ones I'd love for you to know how we can isolate certain things based on length tension for muscles that cross into multiple joints. Is that what screen will find you? Shakes, shakes fist at clouds. <clears throat> Thank you. I actually, um, I had a patient and we were doing the extensions and she was laying back and she was like, well, why does it matter? So like, I got to explain that. Absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. And you can feel it like you can. We did this thought experiment. Thank you for that. For that story. But you, you can feel it. you you have enough life data to know that if you're struggling to create force, if you lean back, you get a little bit of extra push. And that's totally because your rectus ex lengthens at the hip. So it's going to pull more at the knee. That's how that works. Awesome. Awesome. And again, I'm not asking you to learn them all, but there are a few that I th the gastroc, I mean, that's a, that's a muscle I think we should kind of know and the, and the hamstrings at the hip and the rectus at the knee. Good. So that's the intent. So when we get into flexors, extensors, abductors or adductors, the intent by learning the group based on the direction of pull is so that we can see who we need in certain directions of pull. Because if we just call them quads and hams and glutes and tries and buys, I, that may be their names, but it doesn't reflect what team they're on. There's a muscle. I wish they were, uh, they can't all be named this, but when we get up to the extra, upper extremity, the best muscle, no, there's a few of them in the arm. I guess when they were naming these things, they just kind of got tired and ran out of time and said, let's just call it the supinator. You have a muscle called the supinator. Greatest muscle in the world because, but it doesn't always do supination, right? It could do pronation when it's working eccentrically, but the point is they named it based off of its pull. It's a supinator. 
we have muscles called the pronator teres and the pronator quadratus based off of its pull. Hallelujah. <laughs> like that's that's cool because it, it more it's more fitting of the muscle's purpose. And that's to pull in specific directions of motion. Okay. Let's do, first of all, was this a good example of what we're asking? I think this sums up what I'm asking you to do on the test. Can you tell me that when my when I flex and I lower my leg down, I want to make sure you know that's not hamstrings just because we're flexing, right? Just because just because the knee is flexing doesn't mean we're using hamstrings. And in our next example, just because our knee is extending doesn't mean we're using quads. So like something like this, right? So what muscles were working has nothing to do with the specific motion we observe or do. It has everything to do with why you need certain muscles because certain exercises are trying to move us certain ways and we need muscles to play tug of war against. And, and that's all I'm going to ask you guys. I'm not going to ask you crazy, like you're hammering a nail and you decide to stop midway. That that's, that's too much. I've learned. I used to do that. That's too much. I just want you to be able to tell me, Hey, I'm working hamstrings. Those are only three of a team of seven major muscles that are knee flexion pullers. Those are our knee flexors, hamstrings or knee flexors because they pull in the direction of knee flexion. And I need the knee flexors in this exercise. And I know it because this machine is trying to extend my knee. True. And what I can't assume is that when I see extension, it's quads. And when I see flexion, it's hamstrings. That's, that's, that's the so what of what I'm trying to teach you. So I don't know if this is a silly question, but I recognize that gravity is trying to extend you. So which mm -hmm. is why we need our flexion pullers. Outstanding so verbiage. Is it, I know we don't assume. So no, 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 you're fine. But is it safe to say that it's all of those flexors are being used, but mm -hmm. just some are being used like more in this exercise? Cor cor correct. Okay. So, so, so yeah. what I'm trying, so, so the step, so the, 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 the process that I'm trying to get you guys to follow here is, and, and you were right on the money. I, you knew I need knee flexion pull. Who are the knee flexion pulls? You say, oh, those are all the ones that cross the knee in the back, right? All the ones that are that are in that circle posterior to the bilateral. Okay. That's it. Okay. Then a separate question could be like, of those muscles that are in that group, which ones are or or I might or I might phrase it where the hamstrings could contribute more <coughs> as a knee flexion puller. So in other words, I, I probably wouldn't combine those kind of questions. That's, that's too much. It would be for that one, um, knee flexors, uh, would it be popliteus? Would, would the popliteus be an agonist in this exercise or would the rectus femoris be an agonist in this exercise? Like it would be, it would be a specific muscle in a group so that way, all you got to do is identify the group and then see who's in that, see who's in that group. And then you know who it's not because you know who it is. A specific question about length tension, though, might be something like this. Um, and we did it for the quads, but like this exercise, and, and if you can't see it, I could turn off the other light for a second. Can you kind of see the context of this exercise? So because the hips are flexed, that does the opposite. When my hips were flexed, I was slacking the rectus, but I'm actually stretching the hamstrings. So a seated hamstring curl would actually emphasize. Notice I didn't say the others turned off. It's just that in a seated position with my hips flexed, I'm stretching my hamstrings more at the hips. So therefore, they're going to pull more at the knee. So this exercise would be one if you were trying to emphasize those muscles, trying to isolate those muscles more. But just because we're isolating certain things don't mean we turn the others off. It's, it's never about that. It's just about a little bit more, a little bit less. 
and sometimes those little bits you know matter. So it would be a question when I'm talking about like emphasizing a muscle based off of its length. Remember, longer is stronger. So if we're stretching it, it's going to pull more at the other end. Would be specific and say, okay, in this exercise, which of my knee flexors would be pulling more or less in this hip position? And you'd be like, okay, well, which of my knee flexors cross the hip? And there's only those three, the hamstrings and they're on your knee of uh, Moodle or, or your knee PDF. It says these muscles are knee flexors and hip extensors, right? So the fact that I'm flexing the hip, you're like, oh, I'm stretching them at the hip. And, and if I'm stretching them at the hip, that means they got to be pulling more at the knee. It would be a very specific, no different to the gastroc and the calf raise, right? Um, I'm emphasizing the soleus more here because I'm, de-emphasizing the gastroc here because the gastroc's a deflexor and because my knees are flexed this muscle's on slack and when i'm standing that muscle gets tightened at the knee so therefore it pulls more and the soleus is like oh great you're back i don't have to I don't have to do as much of the work so it will be very specialized so for this one is it the hamstrings would actually be working more. Now, again, it's not they're working by themselves. It's not that you turn the others off. But because they're being lengthened at the hip, they would be pulling more at the knee. So this position of working my knee flexors would emphasize hamstrings more because they are affected by hip position and the others are not. What about the... Um... Sartorius. So the sartorius would actually be lessened its contribution, right? Because it's a hip flexor. So it would be on slack at the hip. So it would be, it would actually decrease its contribution. So this one would be stretching the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and the biceps for more? Long head. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's no different than if you were doing a hamstring stretch and you flexed your hip, you feel the stretch back here. So you, you stop to feel, I think this is a good experiment. When I'm flexing my hips, I, stretching to me, some people love it. It's therapeutic. It's painful and torturous for me. So we're all different. So when I, when my knees are extended and I flex my hip, I'm like torture. But if I want that pain to go away, all I got to do is flex my knees. That's why, because your hamstrings cross both your hip and your knees. And as soon as I flex my knees, I take that slack, I create slack. I take that tension off. That makes sense? So, so just to make sure, like start to finish, when we identify the agonists and the agonists in this situation would be... The, the machine is trying to push your shin this way. So who would I need in this exercise? The, the padding is trying to push my shin. What motion is it trying to cause at my knee? Okay, what motion do we call that? Yes, the machine is trying to extend my knee, right? You know who I wouldn't need? I wouldn't need my extension pullers. I would need my flexion pullers. I would need my flexors. The hamstrings are in that, t are in that groove. But the word hamstring is not optimal for two reasons. One, it doesn't tell me how they pull. And two, it makes me not remember, hey, there's other players on this team besides these three. There's a starting seven. And so I need my flexion pullers. My circle helps remind me who those flexion pullers are, the ones that cross the knee and the back. Or your list helps remind you, however you want to learn it. But my flexion pullers... Those are my hamstrings, and my membranosus, tendinosus, biceps, and more. But my popliteus, my satoris, my gracilis, and my gastroc. All those muscles work in this exercise. And that's important, not if you're just doing general health, but we're kinesiology majors. There, you may be in a clinical setting where the MRI results come back and they have a strain to the popliteus. They may have a, a contracture to a satorius. They may have, right? Not all of your problems are ever going to might just be hamstring or it may be semi membranosis. So 
it's important for us to know the major muscles and how they pull so that as clinicians, you guys know how to stretch them optimally by positioning the joint in different positions opposite of their pull and also how to work those muscles eccentric, concentrically or isometrically. Because if you understand how a muscle pulls, then you know you have to create external forces that are trying to move that joint in an opposite direction. I guess it was hard to see because I didn't know the machine. Yeah, well, look, that's why yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, lights out. Got it? Yeah. Does anybody want to take a picture? I don't know if it would, if it would show up there. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, the reason we know that it's trying to extend you, just context clues, is because this is not part of his leg. He would have a tumor, right? So it has to be trying to push him. If it would be, if it would be like a traditional leg extension machine, this big bulge should be in the front, I'm trying to flex them. Is this helping? Okay, let's try to do some more. You know what's cool about the knee is there's only so much we could do. Like the knee's not very complex, right? So let's do something like this. Do you think this exercise would emphasize the hamstrings more or less than the seated just the hamstrings just asking about the hamstrings contribution to the knee flexors do i need to turn the light out or can you see the? i think it would be more it would be more it would be less, it would be less. It would be less the okay body. one of you guys is right <laughs> <laughs> let's think about it though let's think about it i think i think you are correct in your intuition because like I would think that because of the way this machine is, I could potentially do more weight, right? Like you could just intuitively say, like I'm I'm grabbing onto these this handle, right? And I can kind of grab onto it and kind of uh, the other one I'm kind of sitting and it, it just doesn't feel as natural. So I think from your intuition, you're right because you're kind of grabbing onto something and you might be able to do more weight. However, yes, yes. Yes. So again, I think your intuition was right because it just feels like you can just do a lot more. And I think that's because you're grabbing on to that other end, but the hips are more extended here. So they would be more on slack, not that they wouldn't be pulling, but they would be pulling less than if you had flexed your hips. And so again, it's just, it's a contribution thing. It's like if seven of us were pulling on a rope, and we all had to maintain a certain tension, let's say of 100 pounds of force. We have to. All of us combined have to pull with 100 pounds of force. If all of a sudden I say, hey, guys, I'm about to scratch my nose. And so I'm about to pull with less. The other people in my group are going to be like, no problem. I got you slack. We'll pull a little more. That's all it is. And all of those muscles are all wired together communication wise. And so if a few of them lessen their pull because they don't have the stretchy stuff pulling as much, no problem. The others are just like, we got you. And we're going to pull a little more. Okay, what about quads or hamstrings? Well, maybe both of you are right, because I didn't make my question clear. If she was doing an exercise, so in other words, some of you might have thought, well, she's stretching. And that's, that's a logical assessment, so that's my fault. Let's say she's doing an exercise where she's moving her knee, okay? So she's going to have extension and flexion. Based off of that information, what would she be working so when, I, when I'm talking about like working contractions and stuff, I'm going to use that word. When I'm talking about stretching, I'm going to say like which ones are she stretching. So that's my fault. Not clarifying. Would she be working quads or hamstrings? Quads. Good. <laughs> the quads are our knee extensors, our knee extension pullers, because she's trying to flex. So we need muscles that are trying to extend. 
if you observe extension in this exercise, would those quads be working concentrically or eccentrically? Concentrically, good. Does everybody see that? The quads have to make this extension happen in the presence of something that's trying to flex you. Okay, now let's use our imagination. She's extended, that's a position. The TheraBand's still trying to kick her butt, right? Bring her foot, her heel to her butt. So from this position, she moves to get into this initial position. So she has flexion, but the TheraBand's already trying to flex. The last thing she would need is her flexor. She literally kick herself in the butt. She still needs her quads. So the knee extensors are going to allow that flexion to happen in this exercise through eccentric contraction. That's what I'm asking you guys to see. And, and that game is applied. There's no magical muscle that works any different. They're all the same. Different names and different motions of pull, but they're all the same. So you can ask us essentially if she's going from a starting position. Yeah. Like so let's pretend. Up. Let's say the first picture she's here, mm -hmm. and the next picture's there. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So if she is here, she would be in flexion. Right. This would be like knee extension. Well, posi position is where you at. Motion is where did you go. So she would start, let's say she started in an extended position and she ends at a flexed position. The motion would have to be flexion. That's no different than saying we're in Lafayette. We ended up in Bro Bridge. I had to travel east to get there. Bro Bridge is east of Lafayette, but to get there, I had to travel east. I'm moving east. So extended is where we're at. Flexed is where we're at. Flexion is how did we have to move to get there. We would need our extension pullers. Okay. Yeah, because we wouldn't need our flexion pullers because the TheraBand is trying to flex you, right? Let me give you an example of a TheraBand exercise when we would need the extension pullers. I think I see one. Let's see. There we go. <coughs> Make sense? So the motions are the same. Same motions, but different muscles, right? Because the TheraBand in one's trying to flex me. Oh, I'm sorry. This would be the same. I need one that's trying to extend me. Yoink. Let's see, where's this? I thought I saved one. Where's one that's trying to extend That guy laying down. The guy. Yeah, you know what's cool? We got both of them in this one. <laughs> that's cool. I think that's why I say that. Thanks for, for seeing that. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old. I'm going to have to get some whatever quad vocals or something. To try to my so I love this picture because, so this is a great practice of position. So we start in this knee position. I'm flexed, but just a few degrees. That's why we have degrees, right? That's why we have goniometry. So I might be flexed like maybe like uh, 10 degrees, right? Left knee is going to flex a heck of a lot more, right? So my left knee has flexion to go into this position. Right knee doesn't look like it moved a lot, but that TheraBand is trying to make me do something. So this one's actually really cool because I have different agonists. One did a concentric contraction and the other kind of did more of an isometric contraction, right? To keep me in that position. It's kind of cool. So the TheraBand would be trying to extend the left knee. True. So would we need quads or hamstrings if it's trying to extend me? Hamstrings. Hamstrings are part of our knee flexor group because the hamstrings aren't by themselves. Hamstrings are knee flexors. I saw knee flexion has to be concentric. To come back down, knee flexors do extension through eccentric. It's probably going to end somewhere around here. Well, I say end. 
you're still going to have gravity that's trying to extend you. But in terms of the extra provided by the TheraBand, you know, once it kind of gets on slack, it's not trying to pull you anymore. Does everybody understand like this one would be kind of working isometrically? You would need your quads on this one because the TheraBand is trying to flex you, right? So in essence, my quads are serving to kind of keep this. You, you know what this foot is serving as? As you take it a TheraBand and tie it to the doorknob, <laughs> as a, like as an anchor so that you can do an exercise. Right? So this leg is like, hey, I'm going to use you as a doorknob. I want you to be stable so that I can use you as a basis to make the TheraBand pull the other. That's kind of cool. So quads on this one, hamstrings on this one. Fastest laterals, medialis, intermedius, rectus femoris on this one. Semimembranosus, tendinosus, biceps femoris, popliteus, gastrocnemius, sartorius, gracilis on this one. So on the test, I'm probably not going to bother with naming them all, but I might say left knee, would it be popliteus or vastus medial? And you'd be like, well, it's trying to extend me. I need flexors. Popliteus is a flexor. So the whole contraction, I know that gets confusing, but at the end of the day, I just want to make sure that we don't just assume because I have extension must be quads. That's all I'm trying to protect us from. That's it. I don't want us to fall into the trap of, I see this motion and therefore I assume it's these muscles. That's all I'm trying to protect us from. It happens a lot. happens a lot. Let's talk stretch. Let's do a stretch. Let's do a, I'm going to show you two <clears throat> pictures and I want you to tell me which position, which stretch, this one or, yeah, that's not bad. Which one do you think would be stretching the rectus more, A or B? A or B? A or B? A. Okay, if you say A or B, I want you to tell me why. Because that's what I think is great about this class or what I'm trying to do, is that we're not just memorizing stuff. I know we do have to memorize some names of some things, but we have the ability to say, I know it's this because I see why it's this. <clears throat> so why do you think the rectus would be stretched more in this one. The knee's more bent. Outstanding. Bent, what's another word we use for bent? More flex. Yes. Now, you can use bent in the clinic. I'm, I am not saying, or, or with athletes, or with, like, I'm not saying, like, you have to throw out <laughs> these kind of terminologies, right? But for us, you know, we kind of have to use, you know, that kind of verbiage, just keeping it consistent. So what do we know about the rectus, or what should you know come test time? What does it do? Rectus femoris, knee extension puller, knee extensor, hip flexion puller, hip flexor. My knee is much straighter here or more an anatomical position than the other picture. Look how my knee is flexed right here. Well, when I flex my knee, I'm going to be stretching my rectus, right? So both positions, the hip is somewhat extended. But when you start to flex that knee, that's when you're really, really, really going to feel it. Really, really, really. That's three real things. Now, it's not to what I love about these, these different examples. We're not saying don't do this stretch. That's not, not at all. But what if you were trying to isolate another hip flexor, right? What if you were trying to isolate? We're going to learn about these major ones. You have iliopsoas, and you have some other hip flexion pullers. But if you flex the knee, maybe the rectus is so tight 
that it limits you going back a little bit more. So those other muscles could have been stretched, but the rectus, if you had your knee flex, is like, dude, I'm super duper tight and we're going to stop when I'm ready to stop. So by extending the knee and putting that rectus on slack, you can go back a little bit further and stretch some other hip muscles that are hip flexors. That's all we're talking about. And I think you can feel this. Like there's such a difference between doing extension by itself without the knee position and then doing something like this where you're just like, oh, Lord, there's just a whole new level of pain and discomfort that I feel because my rectus is like I'm getting it at both ends. The rectus, you guys, is literally doing this. Knee, hip. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting it at both ends. I could stretch it at just the knee. I could stretch it at the hip. But if I extend the hip and flex the knee, I'm doing this to that muscle. Make sense? Can we talk about the ankle either of these pictures? We sure can. We talk about whatever you want. Probably not a good picture to do it. So let me, uh, do you want an exercise <coughs> question or do you want a stretchy question to start off with? Um, this was not too bad. So which of her plant, so she's dorsi flexed, her left ankle is dorsi flexed, right? So she would be stretching her plantar flexors, but her gastroc wouldn't be stretched as much as her soleus because her knees flexed because her knees flex. So that gastroc, although it's getting it at the ankle, it's slacked at the knee, so it's not getting stretched. If she wanted to get that gastroc, she would stand up and stretch it at the knee and stretch it at the ankle. So in other words, you will get, let, let, I'm trying to keep everything in layman's terms, and then we could progress to more kinesiology terms you have more range of motion in your ankle in dorsiflexion with your knee bent with your knee flexed and it's not because of ligaments it's not because it has because your gastroc stopping you from dorsiflexion when it's stretched at both ends. and so if you were trying to assess someone's range of motion or even manual tests for like the soleus you'd want to make that You'd want to bend that knee. You'd want to flex that knee. So that way you could get further into the dorsiflexion and almost like kind of like the, the biarticular muscles or like limiting factors of range of motion sometimes. No different. That's painful. Without even moving my hips, it's not painful anymore because I literally slacked my hamstrings at my knee, so I don't feel the stretch anymore. It's the same concept. Does anybody else get pain when they stretch? I'm bad. So like, you know what I'm talking about. Or when someone's doing a, 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 a um, we have athletes do this commonly. Let me adjust the camera. I'll try to do it up against the wall. Um, you know how sometimes we have athletes who, and when I say athletes, like, you know, we're working with kids or we're working with kids, and they'll be stretching but they're not really stretching. They're kind of leaning back here and their legs are straight. Like, right? And they're like, what? My legs are straight. But their pelvis is posteriorly tilted. So their hips are more extended. So it's like, no, 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 kiddo. Let's get that low back flush against the wall. What is that going to do? That makes us flex our hips. Now, all of a sudden, maybe they can't straighten out their knees because their hamstrings are too tight, right? So, so this class hopefully will help us see some cheating that might be going on with people like, my, my flexibility is amazing. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, let's do this. And it's like, ooh, oh yeah. So without moving my hips, <clears throat> intense pain. Oh my gosh, pain goes away. Longer here means pulling more here. Slack it at the knees, you slack the whole thing. Longer is stronger. Let's go back to, we've done it before, but 
that's okay. I'm hoping that after today's con clarification lecture, it'll it'll make more. I won't say make more sense, but we'll maybe see it a little better. Let's do maybe this picture will. So I think it's really cool that after taking my class, you'll be able to actually explain why there's a difference between these two X stuff. Why even do them unless there's something different? Why even, why even have this as an option unless there's something different? They're both working plantar flexors. This exercise trying to dorsi flex me. This exercise trying to dorsi flex me. But the difference is that the gastrocnemius is on slack at the knee because my knee is flexed here. So because the gastrocnemius is on slack at the knee, it won't have as much contribution as a plantar flexor. That, guys, that doesn't mean it's off. It doesn't mean it's taking a nap. That doesn't mean it's not pulling. It's just definitely not pulling as much as if it was, <laughs> if it was stretched at the other end. Does that make sense? So all we're saying is that on this top picture, the gastrocnemius is working at the ankle, but in the bottom picture, because we slack it at the top, it just doesn't pull with as much force because of the stretchy stuff. It loses some of its elastic potential energy. Is there any situation where when you're just trying to isolate the gastroc, mm -hmm. that the soleus would not be... Um, proper word, I guess, uh, activated as much or activated at all, where yep. it's just not doing anything at all? Is there no, any no, they're all going to, they're all going to work. They're all going to work. So the analogy, the analogy to me is if we did the tug of war, you have seven, you have seven muscles that are contributing to plantar flexion pull, right? Gastroc soleus are the, the big hosses. That's like a, a basketball team and the top scorers are like these two all-stars, right? I'm taking nothing away against the gastroc and soleus all-stars, but you have others that contribute. And if I score two points in the game, I might be the lowest score, but what if we win by one point, right? So, so every muscle is important. What I'm saying is that let's pretend this person is doing 45 pounds of work, okay? What I'm saying is that I need my plantar flexion pullers, although it's not exactly for this example, to do 45 pounds of work. So if I stand up and the gastrocnemius all of a sudden pulls more, not by its choice, because of the stretchy stuff, because of the stored elastic potential energy, the soleus is like, oh, great, dude, I don't have to score as much. So it's not that it turns off. It's just, oh, great. You can score more because you're not sick anymore. So that means I don't have to do as much. So it doesn't turn off. It just doesn't have to take up the slack anymore to have to do more, there's if that no makes way, sense. Yeah, there's no way we can turn it off. The only way you would turn it off off is what we call a nerve block. <laughs> you have to be like a nurse anesthetist and like uh, put it to sleep. Now, that being said, you could. there may be reasons it's turned off, like if it's bruised, um, a bruising could cause a muscle to not function right, or if there's a condition. But um, but yeah, it's going to be a plantar flexion puller regardless. But it may do more of the load if the gastroc is uh, is on slack. Yeah. Great, great questions. Great, great questions. Good stuff. Does does this example make more sense now? Good. So, um, so in the future, bless you. So in the future, if someone's like, uh, or, or uh, you hear someone say, this exercise is for soleus and this exercise is for gastroc, hopefully now we kind of understand why. It's the same external forces are trying to dorsi flex me so i'm working my same agnus but why is one being emphasized more than the other 
these are the two top scorers on the team. But in this position, this person's injured and may not score as much. They're playing with the, I think is the best way to put it. They're playing with a hand tied behind their back. Right? They're being limited. And then when you extend the knee, it's like, yay, I get to play with both hands. And I get to be a more optimal scorer. I get to contribute more efficiently to the pole. So if we were trying to stretch a soleus muscle, let's say there is a bruise to it. And guys, when I say bruise, if you had a significant injury, let's say a bruise um, to your tummy, let's say a, a baseball. This happened to me one time. I was throwing bat in practice, took a shot right in my, my stomach. So at the lab, it, they were doing all kinds of tests because it was real cool. They did thermal imaging. If I did a manual muscle test, nothing wrong with my shoulder. But all of a sudden, so someone's trying to push me down, right, checking my muscles. And one of our grad assistants pressed on my bruise, my arm dropped because my brain is like, my attention is to the injury, not to doing a manual muscle test. So what I'm saying is, is that sometimes bruising or damage could make a muscle like say, hey, I got hands tied behind my back. I just don't feel like playing right now. And so other muscles would have to do that job. In fact, that's what we call compensation. Sometimes when you have injuries, other muscles start doing that job more then those muscles get, get hurt. That's usually what biceps tendonitis is. It's the bicep at the shoulder doing the job of a rotator cuff muscle we call the supraspinatus because that muscle has a hand tied behind the back. And so the bicep's trying to do more of that work that needs to get done. And all of a sudden it's not feeling well because it's overworked. So this stretch would really emphasize our soleus, right? That would be kind of a, a, a soleus stretch. You have more dorsi flexion with your knee flexed than if you would try to do a range of motion test with your knee extended. Solely because, no pun intended, solely, solely is it's because you gastroc. Because with your knee extended, your gastroc is going to be your limited factor to your dorsi flexion. But if we put that muscle on slack, then we could go further. And if we go, go further, we could test the ranges of motion of other muscles. But if you were just talking about the ankle in this situation, mm -hmm. like you say if you were, you said, um, don't worry about the knee, at the ankle from one being the left picture to the right picture being mm -hmm. two. So from yep. one to two, yep. the ankle is. We have dorsi, dorsi flexion, flexion from here to here. We'd be more dorsi flexed here. You're, you, the, your limits to your range of motion is usually musculature, unless we're talking elbow because it's bone. Most of our ranges of motion on these soft endpoints are musculature. So if this person was standing, they may only get this much dorsi flexion. But the fact that the knee is flexed, you can go a little bit further because the gastroc's not as tight. No different than if my knees are extended. Let's see if I could do this analogy. I try to use analogies that we kind of have some common place to. So check it out. You're do, I'm doing a hip range of motion and I'm like, oh, I only have 30 degrees of hip flexion. You know why? Because my hamstrings are stopping me from going further because I have tight hamstrings. So you know how I could get more hip flexion? Flex my knees, unlock those tight hamstrings. I can go further, I can go further down because now my hamstrings got put on slack at the knee and now they're like, oh, you could go further before I stop you again. Same concept. I guess I was asking, like, if so, this is dorsiflexion uh, or dorsiflexion from here be, to here would yes. be right ankle dorsiflexion. Yes, but what would be being stretched, and that would be plantar every, flexors. Everything posterior. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And specifically, everything posterior except the gastroc. Because the knee is flexed. Yes. <laughs> that's great. That that's an I had to have that same epiphany at one point. Yes. Absolutely. And even though that light went off for that for this one, it applies everywhere else in the body. It applies to our rectus. It applies to our hamstrings. It's going to apply to some of our shoulder muscles. The same exact concept. If I slack it on one end, I could go a little further on the other. Ooh, time flies when we're having fun. Was today helpful? Beneficial? Awesome. Guys, y'all have a safe break, okay?
Okay, let's have April 3rd. 